welcome everybody to the webinar building advanced documents with Kaibo platform and docs 32 and we will see that in real life at Alpla internet my name is Christian Bauer I'm CEO of uh, docs 42 and I'm very happy to do that not alone but uh, be joined with by Addis Hugo hello Addis hi Christian thank you for inviting me to this webinar great Addis uh, is director of product technology at Skybo, and will demonstrate uh, a lot of Skybo technology here. And then um, say a special thanks to St uh, Stefan Schwarzler from Alpla. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Christian. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thanks um, for yeah, joining. My name is. Okay, just go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm the head of business collaboration services at Alpla, and the main responsible for the global intranets and extranets. Cool. Thanks a lot for joining. Okay, so uh, gentlemen, what did we prepare for you? Um, we have set up a little ag agenda. Um, right after the introduction right now, I will uh, switch over to Addis uh, and Addis will present some of uh, Skybo platform, how the Skybo platform works. Um, after that, uh, I may give an overview of DOCS42, so what's the main uh, rationale of DOCS42, why it's important to, to design and create uh, documents automatically. And then we came to, to the two main parts of this webinar. First is the live demo, um, where uh, Addis will show what you can do with the Skybo platform on top of SharePoint. Uh, on, uh, he would use an example of uh, managing employees on in, in, in shipment lists. Then I'll, I may create some some Docs 42 templates on top of on top of that, and then others will link the, uh, these together so that you can create uh, documents with Docs 42 automatically triggered by uh, Skybo components on top of SharePoint. Yeah, and Alpla is using that in real life, Docs42 and, and uh, Skybo, and so then I may switch over to Stefan Schwarzler, uh, who will show several use cases uh, how Alpla is using uh, Docs42 and Skybo in the, in the internet. Yeah, and then it's up to you for the Q&A. We'll switch over to you uh, and we'll answer your questions. How can you ask questions uh, in the GoToWebinar panel? On, on the, I think on the, on the right side of your screen, you have a questions panel. So if you do have questions, please just type them in there. Um, please understand that we will not be able to answer these uh, questions during the webinar as this would break the flow, but we will do our best to answer your questions uh, at the end of the webinar. We reserved some, some 10 minutes for that and uh, yeah, normally we'll, uh, we, we should be able to answer all your, all your questions. Okay, so far for the uh, organizational part, uh, then just step into it. Uh, this I will give the uh, presentation keyboard and mouse to you. So please give us some overview of the Skybo platform. Thank you, Christian. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Alice Hugo from Skybo, Director of Product Technology. So uh, working on a product side of te on the technology Skybo, uh, side of the Skybo. Skybo is, to say it shortly, platform to build and manage your business apps on top of SharePoint without any compromise. So our, our slogan is uh, no code, no compromise. Uh, basically, we, uh, our message is build it all, build it in SharePoint, build it easy, and really build it uh, without making any compromises with that one. What that, me what that exactly means, what means uh, bu uh, building uh, business apps on top of SharePoint without compromise, First, we, uh, under that, we consider that, we, uh, that you should build the whole solution, not just one segment of it, not only a form or only whatever. Just build the whole solution and work with that. Build it all and build it fast. Build it in SharePoint. Uh, Skyball is really easy to use and you can uh, produce your stuff really fast. You can migrate your existing environments. We know you guys have uh, InfoPath uh, forms. We know you guys have uh, access uh, access services apps. You, you guys, you have Lotus Notes uh, uh, somewhere. Uh, right? With Skybo platform, you can leverage existing stuff. In the case of InfoPath, uh, you can e even directly migrate stuff uh, from old InfoPath forms into Skybo modern platform. 
usually uh, in the old times or InfoPath or most of the other uh, technologies, you should be you would build the stuff uh, in the place where you would use it. You would build in production, not with us. We give you the whole deploy, update, and manage path how to uh, build the solutions properly. Build it in a development area, development environment. Uh, and deploy it uh, to uh, deploy it to production and work with that and update it painlessly. And uh, on the end, make a product out of it. If you build a solution on top of SharePoint, we give you opportunity to make a, a app out of it, to package app and to put it on different marketplaces for resale. Okay. Um, what is one solution? Basically, when we say build it all, we really mean build the schema, build the data inside your solution. In this case, because we are working on top of SharePoint, create your data schema on top of SharePoint lists, link lists, manage lists, work uh, with the multiple lists, create master detail and stuff. Build actions, that's our pro process engine, how to uh, uh, make your, uh, <coughs> how to make uh, processes on top of your data. Build navigation, make a really beautiful designs around your apps, use some advanced services, like process flows, stage flows, and stuff. Create forms, uh, Skyball rich forms, which are fully integrated in Skyball platform and award winning forms from Microsoft. And we can, uh, <clears throat> we can, um, with certainty, claim the best form tool on the market and really power up your list and libraries. Don't uh, have them only as a, a solution without, a, <clears throat> as a data storage without an intelligence behind it, put intelligence behind your list and behind your libraries. When I said uh, forms, multiple awards winning from Microsoft side, the best forms of the market, we are basically the only in uh, only form technology which can 100% cover all the InfoPath features uh, which InfoPath had back in the time. We are 100% web compliant, you don't need any third party designer or stuff, and we are 100% of SharePoint uh, compliant. We run in SharePoint, we don't integrate into SharePoint, we really run in SharePoint. No need uh, for parsing multiple text boxes. No need to, to tolerate some limiting uh, rules in the expression language or this kind of stuff. Use Kaibo really to have it have it all together there. With our action links, uh, you can <laughs> on one click you can really have many different actions, like with links, with buttons. You can have scheduled jobs. Think of the old timer jobs back in the SharePoint times. You can execute whole different series of instructions in the foreground tasks, which are uh, triggered by user, or background tasks, which are triggered by different data changes or uh, or the time triggers. No need in the background to wait for workflows to run in the background, uh, and uh, no need to have simple OK cancel choices. You can really build very very uh, thorough and deep uh, processes on top on top of your SharePoint data. When I said smarter listening libraries and to putting intelligence behind listening libraries, we are making it easy to make master detail relationships. relationships. As you can see in this screenshot, as I'm going to show you a bit later, you can really make automatic elaborate calculations, uh, which you can reuse everywhere in form, in reports, in everything. Basically, uh, just uh, you can uh, <clears throat> you can uh, create coding in each form. You can do simple filtering. And all the other, all the other stuff, uh, which uh, which makes your list really smarter. Something that we are very proud of, and it's in our DNA, is that we have a full deploy package, update, retract, update, deploy story. The full IML, ILM story around it, which works on Office 365 SharePoint Online, which works with SharePoint on premises. We speak about SharePoint 2013, 16, and 2019, so the app infrastructure needs to be uh, in place. We <coughs> we allow you to <coughs> pardon me. We allow you to um, deploy your solutions, your created solutions, to different marketplaces like Alpla, like Microsoft Marketplace, like uh, all the other ones. Or you, we, uh, we, uh, we of course of course uh, allow you to. Uh, move your solution from development to test to production side to uh, to have the basically the whole whole ALM um, ALM process in the place in Skyworks Solution Studio. No need and you should never do that uh, develop on the production side and you should never write thousands or hundreds of crazy PowerShells called JavaScript scripts just to do some deployment and retract stuff. We've got cockpit uh, and 
dashboards for, for managing that on an easy way. That's just some of the things uh, uh, which we have. There's much more. Basically, we have a award-winning theme designer basically to click and to make your SharePoint look nice. A list query filter to uh, to make your uh, list easily searchable and to overcome the, the list view limit of 5,000 uh, list items. We have advanced page builder both for modern apps, uh, modern pages and uh, classic pages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When we speak about solution, the solutions. This is just a small example of uh, what people uh, were building uh, with Skybo, horizontal, vertical, and tailor-made. Uh, one of my favorite ones is actually airplanes uh, maintenance uh, done with Skybo, but all the other stuff or even more classical stuff that you need. Uh, uh, that you might want to do, you might need. This is what people were building with Skybo and what they had a really good experience with. Who was doing it? Um, well, this is just a part of the list uh, of our uh, of our uh, customers. There are really some big names there like uh, MAN or Tele2 or Altia Farm or Coop, uh, but also smaller organizations like, uh, or Alpla, uh, bigger ones, but also smaller organizations like FIFA or Swisscom. Um, with that, I'm passing, uh, I'm just going to summarize shortly. Uh, Skybo part, uh, platform uh, is to create solutions without compromise on top of SharePoint, to manage and publish them to different environments, and uh, to create products of your solutions and to put them on different marketplaces. With that, I'm giving the uh, ball back to Christian. Christian. What's Docs 42 all about? Thanks a lot, Adis. Great overview. Um, now, okay, just you, you skipped one of the slides. You're listening I also. Skip one of the slides. Sorry, we listen. Basically, we uh, okay. We do um, uh, we do uh, work a lot with our partners and our customers on building high resolution studio, and a lot of the ideas from partners and from customers are actually flying in. And they're shaping the form of Solution Studio as we know it now. So we have a very transparent roadmap, which you can be saying on our website what's coming next. We don't believe in minimum minimum viable products. We believe in products which work. And if you go to our website to the community part, you are going to see that you can suggest the ideas and suggest the new features or vote for existing ideas or for existing feature proposals. So take part into our community. Uh, let us help us to uh, to build the ultimate business apps platform on top of SharePoint. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for, for a great overview. Um, now switch to Docs42. What is Docs42? Uh, Docs42 is a product vendor, so we're creating a product. We're not offering services. It's an innovative software product. It's for generating documents. And it integrates very nicely into SharePoint and other uh, uh, solutions like SAP, Dynamics 365, of course, and it works very nicely together with, with uh, Skypo. So, for example, if you use Skypo to create an, um, a solution on top of SharePoint, you can use Docs 42 to create automatically create, create documents from that. It's very flexible, powerful, and intuitive because we used uh, as a template designer Microsoft Office, and everyone is familiar with Microsoft Office. So no need uh, to to program anything. Uh, you can just create, design your documents in, in Microsoft Office, link to various data sources, and use data as data, yes, but also as images, tables, dynamic diagrams, barcodes, text modules, whole documents, and so on. There's a, there are a lot of options here. Docs42 is also widely used in various industries, so actually in every industry. You see a few of our reference customers here, and uh, you will recognize some, some of the names. Alpla in the first place, uh, but also ABP and, and Rewe and BBT and uh, Canton Argo maybe, or Inselgruppe Bern. Very nice scenarios here. Okay, uh, when it comes to Docs42, what kind of documents can you create? It's always about structured documents. Docs42 is not, not often used to create love letters, uh, but structured documents. What are structured documents? A structured document can be uh, a sales order, a school report, a project report, an investment proposal, a sales report, a health report, uh, an invoice, a ticket, a real estate valuation, an insurance policy. Every, everybody ever seen a beautiful insurance policy? Yes, it could be, you can create them. And also emails, 
presentations. So there's a, a lot of options of documents you can create with Docs 42. A structured document is where most of the data that is presented in this document is already present in some system. In our case, we talk about SharePoint. So this data might be found in SharePoint lists. In many cases, not the whole part of the document is structured and consists of data. There are often parts of a document that need to be individually written. Think about an employer contract. Uh, we, will create an, we will create one afterward where you might have uh, individual clauses because you had a negotiation with it, with this employee and yeah you came to some some special you, you had had a special agreement and you want to be that present in the contract but you don't want to edit it afterward you want to create it automatically and this is possible with with docs 42 okay how are create documents created in real life walk into your hr department and ask the guys how they create their employee contracts and I guarantee you, in 95% of the cases, they will do it like that, copy-pasting, because it's flexible, it's individual. But of course, it's, it's extremely costly, it's cumbersome, it's error-prone, it's slow, it's nine to five, you cannot put that into an automated process. Uh, and because it's cumbersome and error-prone, it imposes a lot of stress uh, to the people who need to do that. You can also walk into your sales department and uh, uh, ask your sales guys how they do they, their quotes. In 90%, it's copy-pasting. They're not experts in, in, in copy-pasting. They are expert salespeople or expert HR people, but they do a lot of copy-pasting. And uh, IT departments are often not aware of that. They often don't even know uh, how much work is put into manual document composition. Of course, uh, business users tend to help themselves uh, and introduce some macros and some apps and, and bulk letters and, and try to help themselves somehow. And in the first place, yes, this is an improvement because it is still flexible, it's still individual, it is automation, so that means error reduction, but you're still in low, low numbers, you are on the client, you're still nine to five. How can you adapt that if you have a, a, a cemetery of macros? Yeah. So from an automation perspective, that's a dead end because when you have a bunch of macros, you cannot not put that in, into an automated process. So the next step for many uh, companies is to, yes, we need a real application. We have our big ERP system and we have server-side automation and 24-7 and, and, and everything. But then we are with the ugly insurance policies, okay? Flexibility is, is, is gone, individual, no more. It's often corporate designed by IT and IT, yes, I have most respect for IT, but they are normally not good in corporate design, okay? Who is good in corporate design? I may introduce you in to three people you will find in every company. Okay, they go by different names in your company. Ego IT, Marketer Marketing, and Bertrand Business Users business user. Uh, and when they think about document automation, they have very different thoughts in mind. IT thinks about system integration, of course, um, but Maketa thinks about corporate design and she's really good at that. And then Bertrand Business User, he thinks about the process and the content of the document. And because Docs42 uses Microsoft Office as a template designer and a no-code data mapper, Maketa and Bertrand can do their job on their own. Of course, they need IT for, for system integration, for performance, for security, and so on. But when it comes to corporate design and content and process, they can do their job on their own. They can bring their competence to bear. And that makes it a lot uh, flexible, powerful, and intuitive to use. So how does the switch, how does that work? Uh, what you see on the, on the left uh, side of the screen is a Word document. And also the Docs 42 add-in uh, is open in Word, so you can extend this Word document to be a Docs 42 template. You see these blue fields, we call them data fields. They'll come from some data source. We will use SharePoint for that, and you can create a document here. We'll do it on the server. We'll trigger it right from directly from SharePoint. But as you see, uh, this data from SharePoint can not only be textual data, but images, dynamic charts, whole tables, hyperlinks, documents, barcodes, you name it. And it's not only SharePoint. 
you can use as a data source uh, also Dynamics 365 or Dynamics On-Prem, CRM, NAV, AX. Uh, you can use SAP, you can use web services, Excel, databases, of course, everything you can, you, everything that speaks SQL. And that works in the cloud and it works on-prem, you name it. You can have as many data sources as you like and you can connect them. So that means that the document created by Docs42 fetches the necessary data from all necessary data sources at generation time. So you don't have to migrate data from any from from one system to the other. You, you can leave your state. You can leave your data stay home. And all the uh, data integration from Docs for the two sides is done also without programming. So you don't need to have a programmer to 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 do that. You can just click it to get it. How is that done? Uh, Docs for the two come with, comes with a data map designer, and in this data map designer, we see that live in a, in a few minutes. You can click together your data sources. We'll do that for sure, but then you can just drag and drop data fields in, in a template. Okay, um, yeah, a lot of talking, but now I would say let's be showtime. And uh, Aris, can you start and, and uh, show us how you can uh, manage employees in, SharePoint, in, in SharePoint with Skybo? I give you the presentation, right? Make presenter. And here you go. Addis, you're still muted. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry. Uh, I think I uh, clicked the wrong screen. Can you just start? Uh, can you make me a presenter again, please? Oh, I am. Oh, okay, I didn't see. Sorry, sorry. We see your screen. It's perfect. Okay, good. Oh, so what, what, you, what you see here is a designer. Uh, but before I show you the designer, I'm going to uh, show you a finished employee management app which we are going to later to uh, to uh, connect to docs uh, 42 uh, so this is my employee management app i have i've got uh, i need to manage different data about my employee uh, their addresses their um, their um, their uh, different uh, data employment status uh, employment uh, next employment steps etc uh, etc etc et uh, now we have only here seven uh, six or seven different employees as an example but imagine you would have hundreds of thousands of those, like our friends from Alpa. So basically, sometimes you just need to filter down uh, easily to find your employees. So for example, I can just here say, hey, show me only the management employees and show me the employees from the engineering. And I'm getting only one employee here uh, uh, drilling down. So we see that we can, uh, with Skyward platform, easily drill down in the SharePoint data without many hassle and without many uh, different stuff. And easily overcome the problem with 5,000 uh, list items uh, elements here. If I open my employee status here, those are demo data, of course, but some of the, those are right there, uh, including picture, including everything. We see how the shape business app on top of SharePoint can actually look, look good and uh, behave nicely. So we have here all the, uh, all the stuff here, my uh, initial data, my uh, address data, I have business address center, the private address is empty, but I have also, we're speaking about master detail. I have also uh, different education information about uh, myself. I have different uh, certificates which I have made. Private data, maybe it will be interesting for me to uh, know which is my children here. I didn't enter it because of the GDPR. I've got different documents uh, here and I've got tasks uh, which I need to uh, perform in my HR, in my HR, uh, according to my profile uh, and the next. So you see how it works. Let me show you have different tasks here um, connected to my profile. I can add another child or certification or task or whatever. But how does it look when we get a new uh, employee? I'm going to click here. <clears throat> I'm going basically to, uh, to uh, go here to employees and say, hey, add a new one, please. So we have got a new addition to our team. It's going to be Bob Marley. Marley. Uh, first name Bob, last name Marley. You see that uh, his uh, full name is immediately created for me, for him, so I don't need to answer, enter it manually. System is helping me. Those forms are clever. They, they are not just uh, slow uh, SharePoint forms. I can enter some uh, birth date uh, for him. I want to change the year. Uh, email address bob at marley.com. Uh, I can uh, connect Bob Marley to different users, which I can 
since I don't really have an ID, I can't for him, so I'm going to connect it to me. I can put different nodes. I can say it's the employer management level. And you see here that I have entry date and that I have immediately my first working date calculated for me. And the first working day is the Monday next week. I'm going to show you later how that was done. Uh, and I'm going to put him salary. He doesn't work for much money. He's uh, working for enthusiasm. One of the stuff we always need is basically um, to have pictures. This is uh, really important uh, always uh, for the stuff here. So I'm going to use a photo of Bob, which I have prepared here. It's a photo which is SharePoint. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the other data basically empty. With saving this data, we have easily and with help created created a file for Bob, uh, which we which we can do here and we, uh, which we can. Uh, all we see here. How did it work? You remember this few helpers and few uh, stuff which I have, uh, which I have had there. For example, I had a full name which was uh, contacted, uh, which was <coughs> connected first name and the last name. If you take a look shortly here, as we have, our expression language is basically click and drop uh, the, the uh, fields and data and put them in different fields. This is just a text field, so we have first name, last name, separated by space. But we could also have stuff like, um, I don't know, uh, what do we have here? We could have stuff like, uh, for example, uh, entry date. Then we see, see here that it's a new date to, to get a today's date. But if we, have a, if we need a more complicated operations, we can even use full JavaScript. We see here a JavaScript snip, a snippet, which takes the entry date and finds, finds the first next Monday to work with that. That's on the form side. On the process side, I'm going just to click now on the display form, for example. On the process side, you see here our action links. This is basically uh, our actions uh, actions that user can take, but also the navigation for our users. For, because the end user does not really understand the difference between classical navigation and actions uh, that uh, she can take. For the user, it's basically all the same. So we see here we have actions that user can take uh, when in profile. It could be simple tasks like editing employee, which is which is going to be one one clicker application, uh, one clicker uh, action uh, to open a form. We see all the different uh, actions which we can take there, like adding list form, adding form, adding, uh, deleting and updating data, executing scripts, sending emails, showing messages, starting workflow, all different kind of stuff. Of course, our uh, applications gonna. Our the task can be more complicated. We have here one with two two actions. We can have as many actions in one in one uh, in one uh, as many actions in one action link as we want. Behind those, we can also have uh, uh, stuff in background. Like we can make, uh, for example, full name calculated on the background level just by entering here by entering expression directly on the field. That's going to be entered uh, executed in the background and not in the form or as I mentioned, we can have scheduled actions where we can uh, enter, uh, we can create different actions performing periodically, as you know from the SharePoint, like uh, in the uh, time of job SharePoint, performing periodically and stuff. Last but not least, when you are happy with your app, when it looks good, when it works as you want, you go and package your app. I'm going to discard the changes here. You go and package your app, you create new package, give it a name, give it a version, description, Create a package. It lasts like 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm not going to create it here. And then uh, once the package is created, you will, you will be going to set this package and to publish it to the to the different uh, to different uh, environments. I don't have a package here to publish. This reason why I'm getting notified. Uh, but you could publish it either to different SharePoint online or on-premises environments. You could create SharePoint app. Pardon me, SharePoint add-in out of it and deploy it as an add-in. Or you can publish it directly to uh, one of the few stores that uh, we are we are supporting new stores coming every day. That would be in essence about Skywalk platform. There is much more, but in uh, this short time that we have in this webinar, I'm going to stop here and uh, and uh, go back to Christian. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, so then I will go back to my screen and what. Uh... Uh, what I prepared uh, is a document template on top of the list Adis just showed us. So we want to create an employee overview and we want to create uh, an employee contract. 
So let's start with this employee contract. So Aris, I'm going to create your employee mm -hmm. contract now. Um, so we can select an employee. It should be Mali. Bob Mali is here. Yes, but we will, we will, yeah, of course. But we will, we will do it for you. Okay. I think Bob's so build is a bit too large. We should decrease it. But basically, you could immediately uh, deploy uh, create a gender for Bob as well. But yeah, let's do it. Sure. My Okay, so it's, the, so it's your employee contract, Addis. Uh, mm -hmm. And as you see, there is a dynamic uh, table of content. There is a lot of text here. You also work for enthusiasm, uh, mm -hmm. address, and so on. And there are some remuneration policies for you, especially exactly for you, um, and some other uh, documents included automatically. If you look at if you look at the template for that. Yeah, we uh, we have here the the employee uh, the template. What we see is when we click on a data field, it's automatically selected in the data field uh, designer here, data field explorer, mm -hmm. so that we see uh, from which data source this data uh, this data field origins. So we have several data fields here, data sources, and the employee, then the documents, and in the next document we will see many more. Okay. There's the table of content. Yeah, and uh, how, now we see how this is set up dynamically and the remuneration policy actually comes from the data source documents and it is selected there. Selected there. Uh, there can be more documents, so it's, it's here an automated range that iterates uh, for every uh, line in the, in the data source documents to link the documents here as a Word document. So that's a way who, to dynamically build a contract on top of several documents. Because this document remuneration policy is here, it contains blue fields as well. So this is again uh, a Docs42 template that contains logic. So here is it again, remuneration policy. Okay. Then we want to have an, an, an overview uh, of Addis again. So we have an, an, another template here. We create that locally. Uh, we select Addis again. And again, uh, Docs42 is fetching data from this SharePoint online, populating the document, opening it for us here in Microsoft Word. We will do the same thing then for, right from SharePoint. So here's your, your beautiful picture, Addis. You're located in Germany, repre represented by a flag. There is a uh, a Google Maps link. This mm -hmm. is dynamically uh, constructed. Here is your education, your certificates, and your tasks. And the tasks are visualized via progress bars. So we can immediately see uh, yeah, how well you've done in your tasks. And this is all from uh, constructed from SharePoint data. And I will show you how this is done. So this is the template for it. So we have again the full name and the job date title of Addis or the selected employee. Then we mm -hmm. got the, uh, the education here, the certificates. Uh, we would have seen your children if you had locked one in your, chair, in your SharePoint. You didn't, so there's no, no children. And then we have the tasks here and the, the progress bar. This is actually an Excel chart. It's integrated as an image here, uh, but let us have a look how this is done. We switch to the data map and we see our uh, how the data sources, Docs42 data sources are constructed. Have a look at one of these SharePoint data sources. Okay, we see the, the link to, to our site. You can connect, you can connect to this site immediately. Okay, then we select one list, our employees, Okay, then we can immediately test it here. Here is Bob, here's Addis. Okay, and then we can enter queries that's done here. So we can say, okay, we want to read exactly the selected employee. Okay. Also the same way certificates, education, children, and tasks are uh, uh, loaded from SharePoint. And then we have this Excel data source for the progress bar. This connects to an existing Excel sheet. We'll open that for you. So here it is. Um, and as you can see, there is one field that controls a progress bar. 
okay? So if we set this field, the progress bar will change. And this is exactly what we're doing here. We have selected this range. We take a field out of the task list, type numeric, and insert it in this Excel sheet as a return, as an output. We would like to have the charts from the first worksheet. That's exactly the progress bar. That's everything we had to do to get a data source that represents a progress bar. Cool. Looks like that. Very cool. Okay. Then there's a lot, a lot more options in Docs 42. You can filter any data source. You can link a lot of them. Uh, you can connect to many more data sources like the uh, databases, web services, CRM, AX, SAP, and so on. And you, you can have even dynamic fields and calculations and a lot more. But now it's time for you, Addis, again, uh, yeah, to put it all together and to show us how you can create these documents right out uh, of SharePoint using the, uh, the, the Skybo action links. So I pass back to you, my presenter. Here you go. I'm going to show the screen one. Okay, so now Christian was uh, <clears throat> Christian uh, did a nice thing and published all those uh, reports, uh, all those documents uh, to the Docs uh, for two servers. So that, uh, that works out. It's my part to integrate it all with Skyball. So how do I do that? It's actually it's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going to do a few uh, uh, few reports here. I'm going to start with my uh, employee. I'm going to take this employee report that Christian uh, has just shown, and I'm going to add a new task. My new task is going to be uh, display display um, uh, employee. I'm just going to call it employee report. Employee report. I can also put some nice. Uh, image to this uh, one let's call uh, let's call it um, employee report we can use this one and i'm going to click so what do i do as next what do i do as next uh, i've got an uh, uh, i've got a rest call web service call basically which gives me a document uh, document as a as an answer so i can actually just open that guy I can put the URL I've got from uh, I've got from uh, from uh, Christian. As you see, if I open this, I can be easily. Pardon me. Did I just close? Yeah, I just closed. I'm sorry. I just closed my solution unintentionally. I'm just going to open it again. It's simple enough. Simple enough. Right. Back to employees. And ah, I got my employee report uh, already there. Doesn't really matter. So I've got an action is uh, open uh, open um, web page. I'm going to put this as a new URL, but I need to uh, pass my employee ID to Christian. I need to uh, pass to the to the report. And as you see, I've got this ID here. How do I get the employee ID? I simply click it from uh, from the right side and uh, get it there. When I save this one. I can um, open the model dialog, I can open it uh, in a new window, parent frame, whatever. I can put any additional uh, string to this one. I'm just going to close it. On the very same way, I'm going to create the contract for my employee contract. I'm going to add some nice picture for, for the contract. Let's say this. No, this, this is more for the list. For contract, I can use this one. Okay. And I'm also going to basically use the same procedure. I'm going to use um, URL. As you see, again, I need to put an ID. The rest is basically path to the uh, Docs42 uh, servers um, and the report which comes from the Docs42 servers. I'm also going to open the new window and basically save this one. Before I show you the next ones, I'm just going to test this to see if, uh, if it works as it should. I'm going to be brave and to try to open Bob just for the sake of fun, because uh, okay, I need to go back first. I'm going to open Bob. 
and to see have we got an employee contract employee report for Bob. And in a few seconds, it needs to be rendered for me. And I'm getting the, the PDF format. It has been downloaded for me, you see here. Right, there's a report for Bob. Um, I don't have much data for Bob. That's the reason why this document is uh, so empty as it is. But we have seen we have created a new employee easily from the scratch. I have put just some test data on it and used existing reports that are coming from Docs 42. And hey, here it is, direct, uh, directly what we've got, uh, got about it. I'm going back to open my uh, my uh, file here because I've got obviously more data on it. I can just click on contract the same way I've got my report uh, and the same way I'm going to get my contract uh, created here, created for me. In the meantime, oh, there it is only, there's only time. It works fast. Just as Christian has shown you recently, this is my contract with remuneration policies and with everything which is going there. I got a few, a few more stuff here. I can basically, uh, the nice thing is, you have seen here, here I'm downloading it. Uh, I'm downloading it uh, directly to, to my, uh, basically, to uh, Fiverr. What? What if I would like to, uh, so, uh, to uh, store this in, um, in a document library? I'm going to create a new action here, which is going to say save contact or save doc or I don't know, it's contact or whatever, that doesn't really matter. I'm going to use uh, basically the same action here, which I'm using here. But look at this, we have got a few different stuff here. I have I can create I can create the name of the document. I'm using full name here on my own. I can uh, I can uh, create I can decide where do I want to save it. I'm saving in share in the shared documents, but I can also change this to put any other one. And of course, I need as well again to put my uh, to pass my ID on this one. So what happens when I uh, click on this guy? I need to just to put some nice icon. Looks better. When I save this guy now, refresh my page, click on save contract. In the meantime, I'm just going to open the shared documents library on this very on this very uh, file. And here I don't care it in recents, doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to documents library. In document library, beside all the other uh, stuff I've got here, I've got generated employee contracts. When I click here, I'm with my contract, and you see it has been created a few seconds ago. So I've got my contract here directly in my library where anybody who is, of course, who, who's got permissions can work with that and, uh, and, uh, and open it and work with it. Your question might be, okay, this is for one employee. What if I what what if what if I would like to have a list of employees basically uh, in a form of a nice report? Basically, I want to have this as a report. No problem. We are going to switch <coughs> to the all employees view here and create employee employee list with the employee list. I'm basically going um, to do the same. Uh, no, not redirect. I need this and I need to have it like this. And I've got a list of all employees as a special contract here. Uh, I also want it as a, as a PDF. I don't need to pass ID here because uh, I don't want it for any single employee. I want actually, I want for, uh, for them all. I need to choose an icon for this one. There is a list. Save the icon. Save it all. Refresh. Open an employee list. Takes a second.
takes a second. <laughs> and I'm going to get, uh, in a second, I'm going to get the employee list created uh, for me. Uh, the data of all employees are going to be iter iterated and stored in a PDF as, as a report. As you see, this is my list here uh, with the tasks, with the uh, QR code, with the photos as you want to have it and do all the other stuff. So this is, it took us less than five minutes to integrate Skybo with Docs42, to pass data, to pass values from Skybo to Docs42 uh, document generation. I was passing IDs, I was passing document library names. I could basically pass anything from my, uh, from my uh, uh, context and field data on my right side. And on this way, create really, really uh, powerful structured documents, PowerPoint files, Word files, PDFs, name it, whatever you want. Yeah, that would be about integration, Christian. Wow, that was absolutely impressive. You yes. created, I counted it, you created four links to, to automated documents and it took you five minutes. Wow. That's how it works. That's how it yeah, should that's work. Yeah, that's absolutely impressive. So, but now we go to the next impressive thing. Um, because Stefan Schwerzler is the one who, who is using that in real life. Uh, and Stefan, I would, I would like to pass over to you uh, to give you some overview of what, what's the benefit you're using these tools uh, for Outlaw Internet and what, what scenarios are you uh, creating here? So wait a minute, I just change the presenter, my screen. Okay, that one and give you keyboard and mouse and here you go Stefan. Thank you Christian. Okay, um, maybe just a few facts about Alpla because most people don't know Alpla, although we are not too small. We have, yeah, we have around 20,000 employees and uh, we we have a lot of locations so we're not centralized we are a decentralized company as you can see officially it's now 176 a lot of countries of course and a lot of continents and here's the map if you wonder where we are we are nearly everywhere except australia and japan what are we doing we are producing um plastic packaging so I guess maybe some of you know these examples. So we have, a, we have a few of them. I guess that's what you find normally in your supermarket. And that's what our core business is. So this was just to give you an idea what we are producing in the end and what our IT is supporting. Because one of our biggest task is to keep everything together in all these locations. So we have one thing we have here, this is our contract management. This is what was the initial, initial solution that brought us to Skybo. So we needed a tool that um, did the contract management very easy for us and where we could use uh, different layouts and different forms and everything had to be customizable because we have different regions, different cultures, um, different requirements. And we solved this with Skybo. So what you see now, this is now um, a combination of the Skybo action links on the upper left and of the Skybo uh, rich forms in the middle. And on top, you can see there are uh, three tabs and you can switch between these tabs and compared to standard SharePoint, this makes it a lot more easier and it's a lot more attractive to the end user. Um, as Alice showed before on the upper left, we completely um, reduced or um, we got rid of the left navigation at the end because we wanted the user, when the user opens an item that he is completely in the context of this item and only has the necessary links on the left side that are related to the item. 
This is how the edit form looks like, but we saw it already before in Adi's presentation about all the possibilities and the designer. And also in this edit form, of course, you can switch between the tabs and um, manage each region as you need it. Yes. So we have one very interesting thing. This is um, our main Docs 42 application. We have a document quality system, uh, sorry, quality document management system. And this is also decentralized and it's also customized for a lot of regions. And what we were trying to achieve here was that we, from a corporate perspective, we wanted to have every document, the same header and the same footer. It, uh, we have a lot of languages in Alpine. We, we cannot ensure the content that's impossible. What, what corporate quality wanted to achieve is this standard header and standard footer that we at least have kind of corporate design everywhere. And as you can see in, in this screenshot here, this is, uh, I guess, from Italy. And I'm sorry for that, it's a little bit small, but we have two other examples. This is a bigger one, this is from France. So this is how the header looks like, and this is how the footer looks like. So we achieved this with Docs42. And what's happening is that the people upload their documents here, they enter metadata and choose the, the right location. And at the back end, we take these documents and uh, render it again with Docs42 and we simply replace the header if there was any and also the footer. And we built the header just in time with the data from this SharePoint library. We have another example from Russia. So you can see we do not only have Latin letters, also Cyrillic and Chinese. Then we have a standard example. So this is replacing InfoPass. We have a lot of InfoPass forms here in Alpla. And we now started to replace these forms. Um, this is, for instance, this is a calculation form where you can do calculations if we need new machines, new modes, new components. And we we now, this, this form is still under construction, but we now decided to do it like this. So we took the big InfoPass form and split it up into several parts. And then you have the possibility to have smaller pop-ups or dialogues. One thing that is very, very, very interesting and helpful, these are uh, in generally reports. It doesn't matter which report. So we generate a lot of reports uh, with Docs42. Um, we also do project reports. We do user reports, department reports, newsletters, everything. So, and we try to automate as much as possible. For instance, these are reports. These reports are generated every night. They look, I would say, simple, but um, it does job. It's it's just simple. It's quick. The person who is working on this can edit the report anytime and recreate it. Very simple. At, at the end, this is a Word template with an Excel integrated for the small graphics down here. And yeah, it's it's it's. You do not need a lot of time for this. We have a PowerShell, a PowerShell that creates these reports. At the end, this PowerShell uh, loops through a SQL Server database table and just generates these reports every night. All these reports are deployed on a SharePoint server as an HTML file. So there's no we only need it on a daily basis, so you do not have to wait until something is loaded. It's there just as when you click it because it's simply HTML, HTML. Then last but not least, we have, I think maybe this is a classical example. Um, we have this newsletter generated, I think, all 14 days. This is just one newsletter. We have several, of course. And before that, uh, 
assistance of the to the head of the IT had to do it manually and now she's simply whenever she needs it she clicks a button and she got she gets this as a result and can then still a little bit modify the newsletter and then send it out to the people so this saves a lot a lot of work and we have a lot of newsletters our newsletters are mainly um, SharePoint blocks so all the items you can see here this is always a, a blog entry and it's, it's simply yeah this is I, I think this is where you can save a lot of time because this is all manual work and when you agree to certain standards then you can automate all these proce processes and you can inform the people we also have for instance um, project workspace reports so in, in SharePoint if you have a project for instance a department or a topic workspace or a project workspace it's possible to send you a report once a month or every five weeks or ten weeks however you like it and you simply get this report fully automated nobody cares about how they get it or takes care about if they get it or sense it or I, I think you all know these powerpoints in before you have a bigger meeting or your monthly updates you can completely automate this and maybe one last thing to docs 42 yeah we we have a lot of use cases where we have to replace infopath forms and we're still busy with it we will continue on that and as we have seen before um, the designer from Addis we are we do not use that yet the this publishing form this how we say um, the solution studio online we have mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I should mention this Addis but we, there are two parts of docs 42 and we have I would say the whole thing and mm -hmm. we also have these um, scheduled actions and also the, we, we used to uh, program event handlers on lists and we used to have PowerShells as everyone knows it with these uh, PowerShells and task schedulers and now we replace this one by one with the scheduled actions from Skybo and also with these event handlers you can put on lists with the Skybo Solution Studio. Yes, yes, that's fine, Chef. I didn't want to get uh, too deep. Uh, there are different ways how we uh, how we provide uh, our uh, our platform. I will show show the solution studio online, but as you uh, have mentioned, uh, you can also get it in different components as, as you guys did. So it's perfectly fine what you did. One thing I wanted just uh, just to mention, uh, you mentioned Infopath Migrator. Uh, we are working now, and uh, we'll be ready in uh, until the end of the year. We are going to. Uh, Offer a semi-automatized way of migrating InfoPath forms to Skybo uh, Rich Forms, existing InfoPath forms. So you will be basically able to read your existing InfoPath uh, forms and transform them to trans Skybo forms. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, then Stefan, are you okay so, so yeah. far? Wonderful. Yep. Then, then we are we approaching uh, the last step in this webinar, which is the Q and A. So now it's up to you to ask your questions. You can do that uh, by typing them in it in the questions panel in your GoToWebinar um, panel. There is a, a an area for for typing in questions. Uh, so we will we will stay here for a few more minutes to 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 answer your questions. So it's it's the moment there are none, uh, but we are we are waiting for for your questions. It can be different different reasons for that. Maybe everything was that clear. Always scare the people away. Always scare them away. Or every everyone is is, is looking forward to to a free evening. <laughs> okay. So while. So, oh, they are. The first question arrived, of course. Here we go. Yes, we are fully, uh, is Skybo fully supporting Office 365? Yes, we are fully supporting Office 365. Our designer is in Office, uh, Office 365. 
uh, our deployment target could be from Office 365 to on-prem to different stores. How does this differ from Skybox document generation? Oh, oh, that one is easy to answer. What Skybox can do, we can generate docx uh, files, which are basically uh, place uh, placeholder infillers. What you can do with uh, docs 42, you can uh, beside uh, the board documents, you can create board, you can create PDF, you can create structure, you can merge documents, you can uh, replace stuff in the document, and Christian, you can go on. Yes, you can you can do a lot of a lot of fancy thing. You can have as many data sources if you uh, as you like. Uh, you can integrate data from other sources as well. So maybe you have an SAP system and want to integrate uh, data from an SAP system mm -hmm. to to your documents you create from SharePoint. That's no problem. That's very easy to do. Uh, we will we will we will demo that at the at uh, German SAP user group. We will have a speaker part here. Mm -hmm. Um, you can have these uh, dynamic charts we showed, like the progress bar. There can be there can be a lot more. So this is much 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 more powerful. That's the thing. Okay, so more questions. Sorry for that. Let's stay here. Okay. Uh, question from Klaus again. Oh, Skybox yeah, nice. can, if Skybo yeah. can be used with the modern UI, uh, short answer is partly. Longer answer is for the moment we have, uh, we support modern pages and modern views. That says you can uh, you can put our action links uh, in the uh, in the action bars in the modern views. Until the end of year, we are also going to support modern forms. So we are fully on the way there. Um, we are. We have more than a half of the work already behind us. We are also waiting for quite some time that Microsoft opens the APIs. We are there now, and we are going to have the modern forms fully supported by the end of the year. You are welcome. <laughs> so, any more questions? Yes, then we are going to close here. Um, thank you very much for for watching this webinar. Oh, there is no, there is one more there's one more question coming in. Where do you see the difference to Power Apps, Addis? That goes to you, I think. <laughs> well, I would uh, it would take me an hour to answer the question uh, properly, but let's just put it that way. The uh, the real difference is in the feature set first. Uh, we support master detail, we support uh, expression language, we support all different kinds of stuff. Power Apps is basically for doing basic necessary stuff uh, on one form only without master detail, uh, without really um, anything that's more complex than expressions uh, with Power Apps is difficult to achieve. Um, uh, which is uh, which is working with us. Power Apps don't have any background processing. Uh, Action links are impossible to uh, to uh, make with that. It's it's just the the, the, the difference is how the difference is uh, just in the feature set basically. Okay. Then let, without let's any, try. Without any, without any intention to bash power apps, uh, if you just need a simple form design, go for it. You are going to be uh, very fine with the power apps. But if you actually need a business application on top of SharePoint, you are not going to cut it with Power Apps. Cool. So I'll, I'll try again to close it down. <laughs> <laughs> so last chance to answer your questions. Three, two, one, done. OK, thanks you very much for, for watching this webinar. For being with us and spending the afternoon. Stefan and Adis, thank you very much for your great presentations. It was a, uh, a joy and an honor to work with you. Um, this webinar was recorded. Uh, we will send out the, the recording uh, to all uh, attendees, everybody who, who registered basically, so you will, you will get that and you have the chance to rewatch it. Thanks a lot. Have a great evening or a great afternoon or a great morning if you, if you happen to be in the U.S.